Alleluia. Alleluia. We bless the name of the Lord. We thank him for all that he does. For his goodness and his grace. Alleluia. Shall we pray? Father, we honor you for your help, for your guidance. We honor you, Lord God, for conducting our steps and our path. We pray that you speak unto us. We pray, Lord God, that you speak unto our souls, our mind, that you speak to our spirit, that our inner man be strengthened by your hands, and that we be satisfied with your word and with your will. Soak us inside your wisdom. Provide us your knowledge and lead us in your path of everlasting life. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That to your neighbor is awesome. Is awesome. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to go straight to the word. And we're going to read from the book of John, chapter 8, from verse 1 to 11. Hallelujah. So, very important for us is, uh, as we read, we read from the King James, but uh, we read from the King James, but we will also read uh, from the Amplified sometimes. So go ahead, verse 1. John chapter 8, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Jesus went on to the Mount of Olives, mm -hmm. and early in the morning he came again into the temple, mm -hmm. and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. Hallelujah. He went, give me one. He went it, early, I mean, he went onto the Mount of, of olives. olives, and early in the morning mm -hmm. he came again. What is olives? Yeah, what do you do with olives? So what do you understand by that? That he? He, he, eh? he went to be anointed. You cannot speak if you don't have the anointing to speak that word. Other than that, you will just do, you know, regular things. He went to the Mount Olives. That stands as, you know, oftentimes the Lord Jesus will go up to the mountain, right? Very often. He will never go one day without going up to the mountain throughout his ministry. We do know that before he started the ministry, he went into the wilderness to be prepped. And then, as he entered the ministry, very often time, he went up to the mountain. When you read the book of Matthew, you see that uh, he went out, up to the mountain, and he prayed all night before to choose the 12. Hallelujah. He prayed all night because he was a a case, <laughs> he, he, he had to make it right. But it's not because he prayed all night and received the anointing in order to do the work that he did not choose steal Judah. Are you what I'm saying? Even Judah has a purpose. Amen. Let me explain this. When you know that God has spoken unto you and you do what God said to do and you know God has said it and he goes wrong, don't doubt whether you heard of God. Because there is a purpose. <laughs> he says, isn't one among you the son of perdition? And yet I have. So you may sometimes fall in a place where, you, you know, when you know that God has spoken to you, at that time, I usually say, take a pen and record the temperature of the certainty. 
whether you are certain 100% or 90% or 50%. Because it will come a day where your own spirit will tell you, are you sure? <laughs> are you what I'm saying? But the day God was speaking, you knew that you knew that you knew that it was the spirit of the Lord speaking to you. So when Christ speaks to you to do something which you know you have been appointed for that purpose and then you do exactly what he told you to do and he turns out the other way that you would have expected between your expectation and the will of God, there is a gap. Hallelujah. You might do something that God told you to do and you have an expectation that he will become beautiful. <laughs> Amen. Uh, let me put it in the case of Joseph. He did exactly what God wanted him to do, meaning to be upright. Hallelujah. And by being upright, he expected that he would be treated fairly. First expectation failed because his brothers sold him out. He went in the house of Potiphar. He was still upright. Amen. He was so upright that the day when the wife of Potiphar came to try to have him lay with her, he said, what God wants of me is to be upright. So by being upright, he can only expect to be cleared out. His expectation went into the tomb. Amen. And the expectation of the wicked went over him. But was he not doing the will of God? But all this was for an appointed purpose. It was for a very divine appointed purpose for which the time was to be revealed, but for which you as the child of God must continue to follow the path. Somebody was giving me a picture last time. I sent him a question and then I said, I said, brother, we want to do so, so, and so, so, and so. And the word of God says, ask you, shall die, uh, you shall receive. So I'm asking you. <laughs> and he sent me a picture. And in that picture, there was two men. One was digging. And as he was digging, he was coming close to a bunch of diamonds. And he was that thin, close. Then he turned around. And then the other one was digging. He was that far from the diamonds and he was still going. And then the guy said, you are oftentimes closer to the objective, to the goal than you think. Sometimes as you go, you feel like uh, you haven't fulfilled what you know you ought to fulfill. But you are closer to the fulfillment of it than you think that you are. And if you don't pay attention, you turn back around thinking you have been working too long. And yet you were that close. So in the purpose of God, you must first identify yourself as being a person who learned to receive from the Lord the anointing. Before to operate into what he has sent you for. What will help you continue is not your personal will. Mm -mm. Your personal will can only be energized, can only be strengthened when that personal will is given unto God so that he can give you his will to do his will. Does, does it make sense? For the word of God says he does what? He gives us the will to do his will. So the first step is you willfully say, Lord, I surrender my will so that I may have your will. So that my will now be assembled and resembled to your will. But when you know now you know the will of God, and then things go wrong, amen, the Bible says you should not 
worry. You should not be concerned. He said, do not be afraid, despaired, dismayed of the fiery trial that comes your way because you do the will of God. Hallelujah. Because you do the will of God, you should not be afraid, dismayed, disparate in your spirit that how come I do everything right and then everything wrong is happening. Am I truly doing the will of God? That's where the devil enters in. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said oftentimes, John the Baptist, he knew who was Jesus when? In the belly. <laughs> Hallelujah. When he came out, he knew he was him. He was come to prepare the way of the Lord. Not of a Lord. Of the Lord. So from among the many Jesus that was uh, existing at those times, because you know there was a bad Jesus, remember? He knew which Jesus he was preparing the way for. How did he know it? By the Spirit. But the day he said, this is the Lord. This is the one that everybody must follow. I always say, he himself. <laughs> he didn't follow. But when the day arrived, where he... Between what God told him that Christ was and between what he expected that Christ should do, when he saw a disconnection among it, he started doubting. Because remember, John the Baptist was somebody who was strong. He was sharp. He looked into the kingdom and sees all the foolishness that uh, the king Herod does, and he goes rebuke him right in his kingdom. And he care less. He said, I'm going to tell you what you do that's wrong. <laughs> he thought he was Elijah. <laughs> Amen. The difference between him and Elijah is that Elijah can call fire. Amen. He can only call water. <laughs> Amen. He, he, he was appointed to the water. Elijah was appointed to the fire. Amen. It's not the same. <laughs> And he finished speaking. And who was angry at him? The wife who's called Herodia, right? She said, this man, there tell me that I did wrong to combine and to convene with this guy to kill my own husband. How does he tell that what I did is wrong? And then she makes, you know the story, everything so that the, the daughter of, her daughter we now demand the head of. The Bible says when the Lord Jesus learned that John was put in prison, what did he do? He left the place. <laughs> Are you what I'm saying? I was standing for your will. I spoke your word. You say, it shall not be among you wickedness. So I stood on your will and I spoke your word. They put me in prison. Instead of coming to speak for my sake, you leave the city. But he was doing the will of God. That's why you need anointing. That's why you need anointing. Elijah was doing the will of God. By the day he found himself alone without anointing, he was lost. He was lost. Only the people came to announce unto him what was about to happen to him from her. Jezebel, all he wanted to do was to die. That's why you need anointing. You need anointing for everything. You need anointing for every. Tell to somebody you need the anointing. <laughs> you need the anointing.
You thinking, okay, I'm going to take on this job. But if you don't have the anointing to carry this job, this job will bury you. You know, I'm telling the truth. <laughs> Today, the family is not here. I remember that, please, prophet, pray that we have the job. Are you sure? <laughs> no, you know, we want this job, but we don't want Amazon no more. Are you ready? No, you know, you know okay. Prophet, this job I don't understand. It is too much. It is killing me. <laughs> but you just pray. <laughs> Are you what I'm saying? You prayed that God will grant you the desire of your heart. With that anointing, you cannot carry on. Mm -mm. It would be difficult for you to even understand the purpose of what you were being sent for. You will be confused. Because those challenges will arise absolutely. But without the annoying thing, you will be confused. You will be frustrated. You will be overwhelmed. So, Christ chose a disciple after he anointed himself. But we all know the outcome was not pretty. Because the one he chose, the day he needed them, that day, they say, hasta la vista. Hallelujah. But you see, was not the same one who also preached the gospel that we're hearing. You see what I'm saying? That day they may have deserted him, but they were appointed for a time. He did not choose them wrong. Are you know what I'm saying? Because even that day they deserted him, they ended up doing the will for which he has chosen them. So instead of being discouraged, disappointed. Pray rather to receive the anointing that will help you carry on. Let's go back to the word. John chapter 8, verse 3. Let's go to verse 1 again. Verse 1. Jesus went on to the Mount of Olives, mm -hmm. And early in the morning he came again into the temple, mm -hmm. and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. You have to see all this is about praying, worshiping, being anointed, and doing the will of God. All this. Amen? Continue. Verse 3. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Verse 5. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? Hallelujah. Amen. Anointing. Anointing. Because the law of Moses... Is the law that God has approved. A Amen. So you cannot just get up like this to say, I don't agree. <laughs> no. You, you, you can't. If you do so, you literally go against the will of God. You may not like the way it looks, but you must agree. So how do you know that what God said has changed? Because I often, I often times say that God does not change 
his word, but it changes his law. The law of circumcision was appointed as a must do in the flesh. And down the road, it did change, right? So in this case over here, they bring, they do not just bring an accusation. They bring the law that says what they ought to do. And they ask him, what will you do? You face yourself with challenges. You follow what God says. And because you follow what God says, the outcome is contrary to what you know that God says. <laughs> so what do you do? Imagine Jesus. As he's still sitting, he, look, he, has, he has two problems. He has the problem of the life of the uh, lady and the problem of the law of Moses. If he goes with the law of Moses, they kill the lady. If he goes with the lady, they kill him. <laughs> Are you following? Because whosoever will disparate the law of Moses was a blasphemer and he was deserving death. A blasphemer. If you save your life, somebody else will die and the blood will be on your hand. If you save her, <laughs> you will go meet her. <laughs> the angels very early. So what do you do? You see, anointing will not only help you continue, but give you the wisdom to understand when God did change the plan. Mm -hmm. When exactly did God change the plan? Because you see, when you have a Bluetooth, I say Bluetooth, uh, Compass and uh, how would they call it? G uh, GPS compass. You see, the compass is going north. But when you go north, 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 and you turn a little bit, the compass also turns. But as you're going north, if you see there is fire on the north, you will need a uh, the turn, the tour, in order to control the fire to get in the destination. But if you go south, you must make sure that uh, you find yourself again north so you can continue. Uh, does it make sense? Okay. So the law looks at the law. He looks at Moses' law. It looks at the sin of the lady. Both of them agree that it is rightful and uh, it is righteous to kill her, to stone her. Without anointing, he went in the Mount Olives, not to eat olives. <laughs> Hallelujah. He came down and he entered the temple. He thought he was now coming to lay out the will of God. Something, sometimes when you, you feel the power of God, you can go out of your house. You say, brother, the Lord heal you. <laughs> But then, how he thought that he was going to do turns around to become a problematic. You know, today you know the, the story. But if you were there, <laughs> it would be different. It will be different. You may look and say, but, but how, how can you kill this lady? But the Lord says so. Well, I don't agree with this word. It's too harsh. You're blaspheming God. But by anointing, he was able to do something that was unusual. To understand at which time the blueprint of God changed in order to save a life. The law came through Actually, the law was given by Moses. But grace and 
truth came through. So this is what it means. You have the law of the fact, the law of the challenge, the law of the situation. How do you deal with it? By grace and truth. How do you operate in grace and truth? By anointing. So you can continue accurately. Let's read. Let's go back. Verse 6. This they said, tempting him that they <laughs> might have to, to accuse him. Hallelujah. Amen. They already know the story. They already knew the end. They have already made their plan. You're thinking, because you're Christian, somebody comes to you and asks you, this is my problem. You're thinking, ah, the person is, uh, you know, is consulting with you. But the person is looking into how <laughs> to take you down. Let me give you an example. In the time of COVID, when they say everybody must vaccinate in order to go to work, right? You say, no, I'm Christian, I will not vaccinate. Okay. So when you arrive at the time of the work, your boss asks you, oh, brother, sister, how are you doing? What did Jesus say? Oh, the Lord revealed unto me I should not be vaccinated. Fire. <laughs> you, 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 you get my, my point? Is that you will think that they will ask you something because they were trying to help you. But the Bible oftentimes says that people willfully will put a snare just to get you in the snare. Without anointing, how would you avoid it? Let's go. Verse 6, this they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Hallelujah. Consulting God in the midst of challenges. It is by anointing. Most of you will be like, well, I don't agree with that. I mean, uh, well, 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 blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you will be talking so much that by the time you finish, you, you yourself, you, you come as a, uh, what we call it, you, you uh, accuse, condemn yourself. You should, they said every word that you say will be held against you in the court of law. And in this case, it was a case of a matter of law. It was not the Pharisee who said so. It was the law of Moses by which Christ was born. Because the Bible said that he also fulfilled the law of Moses that in the eighth day, he was also circumcised to be presented unto the temple. So he was born in the law. Amen? Even though we understand later on, okay, that he came to fulfill the law, that da, 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 but uh, put things in context so that uh, you can put your shoe right where it was. Amen? Amen. Because in those days... Christ was not dead on the cross yet. In those days, he has not been revealed yet as the son of God. In those days, he was a man. This is John 6. So it was way back then. I, I mean, John 8. Hallelujah. If, if, if we want to put that in context of chronology, it's not necessarily the chronology, but I'm trying to give you a picture. In John 6, more than 70 people just left him because he told them, eat my flesh and drink my blood. So he already had a problem over there of, uh, of teaching cannibalism to people. So he, he was already look at somebody weird. Are you know what I'm saying? Now imagine, my point is that the people thought that he was teaching cannibalism because they left him. Now, imagine the same people who left him, where some of them were found in the, in the temple. They'd be like, 
Yeah, that's the guy. <laughs> that's him. So they were not looking at him as, eh? like in a positive light. They were not looking at him as somebody who will give them wisdom. Mm -mm. They already had a teeth against him. And now they were trying to see how to take him down. With that anointing, it says, for the spirit of the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. So without anointing, you cannot announce the grace of the Lord. Without anointing, you cannot preach and do the will of God. You out should be in boot with the anointing so that you can accurately represent the will of God. Let's go back. This they say to you. Uh -huh. oh, this they say. Let's go back to verse 6. Verse 6. This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Verse 7. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Hallelujah. You see, you know the story, but you don't leave the story. Help me, uh, uh, let, let me you help us. Let me help you leave it. The Lord Jesus is standing in the midst of a church, in the midst of a temple, in the midst of uh, 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 covenanted children of God. And among them, you have those who are called the doctor of the law. Put yourself in that condition. You're going to be interviewed for a job. And the job for which you're being interviewed, the guy who's interviewing you is an expert of that department. Now he's asking you questions concerning how you will operate in that specific uh, department or matter or subject, whatever. You know that he is an expert. Recognized internationally. He asks you questions that you haven't even heard of yet. But if you don't answer accurately, bye-bye. I guarantee you, you will be trembling in your shoe. You will be sweating under your arm. And then you will make everything to try to, like a, uh, uh, come sir. Uh, no, no. Impress him. Try to hold yourself up. Give answers. But most of the time, you will give something that is stupid. Because you don't know what you're talking about. And as you do so, the person will look at you. And then we know you don't know some of the degree of the matter. And you will be let go. So the Lord Jesus is standing in a position where he did not spend his time with the Pharisee as the Pharisee spent the time learning the law. They did not know who he was. Amen? But yet, as they were speaking to him, they really believed that this time they got him. Christ as a mere man cannot be able to understand the law if he's not by the anointing. Are you following what I'm saying? So they take the law and they say, this is what God says. What do you say? Sometimes you may read the word of God by the letter and you will miss the spirit of the word. 
Because this is what God says. What do you say? You cannot also contradict God. <laughs> Amen. But he understands something different between the law of Moses and grace and truth. That's, that's the difference. He understands that grace and truth surpasses the law. Let me read again. When the president gives you a pardon, that's what? That's grace. When the law condemns you for 130 years and he says pardon, what happened? So the pardon has, has power over the law. That's why by the law, we ought to be dead because of our sins. So understanding grace and truth helps you accurately apply and tell. Without distorting the law. Else you are found guilty by the law. But you cannot do this without anointing. And you cannot have anointing until you go to the mountain. That you never go to the mountain. <laughs> Hallelujah. The reality is that the life that you want to live in this world may not feel easy, but you can make it easy. Let me explain again. The Lord Jesus says, all of you who are heavy and come unto you and take my, for my yoke is, amen? So he's asking you to exchange, not that your life would be easy, but you will have a new sight on the circumstances. Remember the word we spoke last time. The circumstances did not change when he said, be still. But the view of the circumstances change. You see what I'm saying? I mean, when you, when you stood up against the thing, peace, be still. He was not afraid of the circumstances because inside of him, he already had the peace. So you may not see the circumstance change, but when you have peace, then you can address the circumstances to change. Does it make sense? The children of Israel. They were by Pai Aroth and Migdal facing a dead hand. They had on the right the towel of the enemy. On the left, it was a closed dead hand. And all they had was a Red Sea. You know, let's be honest. When the last time you have a cross, a lake, like across the lake, barefoot to go to the other side, <laughs> Hallelujah. Lake is too much. Let's take Marigo. What's ever Marigo? A stream. You know, sometimes we read the word of God and we see what happened and we know the story, we know the hand of it, and then put yourself there. Your life is about to be finished. And you look, you see Marigo. Uh, I see Marigo. Um, a sea. The sea is not 10 feet large. <laughs> Amen? Let me, let, let me, let me, let me, let me get back. You have a bill to pay. 
and you have a mortgage or a uh, an apartment, uh, how we call it? Rent. This is you with your rent. And this is the children of Israel with uh, a C. If you don't pay your rent tomorrow, you and yourself will be out. Okay? And the only money you have is debt. <laughs> Amen? You already received the eviction notice. The police is coming for you to get you out tomorrow. And then you had the children of Israel over here. The Egyptian coming for them to cut off the head. And they have over there a Red Sea. You are over here. You don't have money to pay your rent. And you know with the notice that tomorrow at the same time as you read, you will be out. And again, the only money you have is debt. Between you and the children of Israel, who is in the uh, bad place? Yeah. Because when they get you out, you're still alive. Are you know what I'm saying? When they get them, they're dead. But in reality, you look at the story of the children of Israel like, a, wow, praise God. Yes, God. By your situation that is the least, you are all. Are you know what I'm saying? Your situation that is the least. Oh, what shall we do? Hey, Lord Jesus. Hey, Lord God, help me. Because you don't have anything for me. Calling everybody. Can I have some money? Uh, 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 cousin, don't you have uh, some, some money for me? Uh, well, meanwhile, when you read the story of the children of Israel, you laugh about why are they crying? They can pray. By you. Who will not die. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's easy for you to see the problem of the other one. But you who is at a little problem, you will not die. All you will see is the shame of the neighbor who will see you outside because that neighbor was having a big mouth on you. <laughs> Amen. All you will see is where you're going to take a shower. So while your problem is nothing, you are incapable to trust the God who has delivered these people out of the Red Sea. Lack of anointing. For the Spirit of the Lord has anointed me to proclaim a year of, of grace. How will you proclaim grace over your situation if you have not been anointed for the task? But because Christ was anointed for the task, he was able to proclaim grace. Are you following? Over the law. Give me that back the word, please. Verse 7. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Hallelujah. Amen. Very distinct behavior that he's having over here. First one, instead of arguing with somebody over a matter, consult the spirit. Consult the spirit. Instead of uh, screaming over your problem, being confused over your situation, consult with the spirit. Let the Lord tell you how you are supposed to get out of this impasse, of this dead hand. Lord, what shall I do? 
how many times you say, hey, I'm going to do it. Instead of saying, Lord, what shall I do? Hey, you know what I'm saying? The same word and the, 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 the same syllables that you can use to turn around and then to put on God and so you have the anointing. You use it and then you turn around, you put it on yourself and you are in more trouble. But you cannot continue to seek the will of God without anointing. And you cannot have that anointing if you don't go to the mountain. Say, Lord, your spirit has anointed me has anointed me to proclaim a year of grace upon my life, upon every circumstances, upon every circumstances in my life and my family and my household. The Spirit of the Lord has anointed me. You know, sometimes people say, oh, I feel goosebump. That's not anointing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Because goosebump will not cause you to solve the matter. The anointing of the Lord. How do you know that you are anointed when you pray? When you pray. Because the word of God says, he went to the mountain. Amen. And when he came down, he was able to solve a 4,000 matter law. A law that has been around, I mean 2,000 at least. That has been around for a long time. I, 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 do you understand what I'm saying? Like you, case, you take your case, you go to the court. And there is already a Supreme Court decision that has been made before that has made everybody who had the same case like you lose. Let me explain again. This is your case. You go to the court. For that same exact case, all the people who've been with you for 200 years, they have all lost because the Supreme Court has already decided that this case is a lost. On which hill will you go to say my case must be rendered justice? On which hill? Does it make sense? In the United States, they're talking about the Constitution, which is something they don't want to play with. They can disagree about it. They can do all they do about it, but that Constitution is still standing. In other countries... They change the constitution every two years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's not the same thing. So over here, they do all they do, and the constitution for them is still standing. When that constitution has said, okay, it's over, and they call it judicial, judicial, judicial precedent, where it has already been determined by the court that for this exact one, with all the appellate court, this is a game over. You came with the same case, and then you expecting to have justice by the law. How will you do that? That's what I'm saying. How would you have justice by the law? Every human being before you for a thousand years have been in the same court of the law. The law of death, the law of loss, the law of destruction. And none of them have escaped because this law has been established that the devil, he's come to kill, uh, steal, kill, steal, and destroy. So every human being on the earth is under the law of the wrath and every human being is apprentice for destruction. How do you change it? Amen? By 
by the anointing. Because you are in the Lord. And you turn it around by the anointing. Because you have learned to go to the mountain. So the Lord Jesus stooped down. And he started writing. I thank God that they did not tell us what was he writing. Amen. In another word, all is left inside is every possibility for you to consult with the Lord. You want, you want to know what was going on there? Go consult with the Lord. You want to know how to solve the problem? Go consult with the Lord. But the problem is that you don't consult with the Lord, not because you don't know how to consult with the Lord, it's because you don't even believe that the Lord will answer you. Lack of belief that the Lord will answer you make you lack of consultation. I trust in God, but this one, I feel like a, I'm alone. I trust in God, but this one, I feel like a, it's my problem. I trust in God, like a who? Martha, right? She walked with the Lord for long. She saw Jesus Christ doing all the miracles, right? So she trusted in him. She knew him. She walked with him. She talked with him. Amen. She dined with him. She so trusted in him that she sent for him. My brother is, no, no, sick. Please come and do your work as I usually see you doing. I saw you raising the daughter of Jairus. I saw you healing the servant of uh, uh, the centurion. Hallelujah. I saw you healing headaches and do all kind of stuff. So I know you are able. So she knows, she believes, and not only she believes, she believes for herself. But then, he does not answer her. Aha. 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 And this word always uh, strikes me. The word says, before even the word of God will say that he did not answer, the word of God says that uh, the guy, Lazarus, that he loved. Mm. This one, when you get it right, you understand the deepness of the will of God. The one that he loved, he did not answer. She said, Jesus, please come. Lazarus, the one that you love. Ah. Hey, it's not just come that my brother is sick. He's come, the one that you have told me that you Love. The one for whom you can vouch. The one for whom you can give up everything. Because the Bible says that uh, he so loved the world that he gave. Amen. So if you love, you are to give. So give me your time. Give me your miracles. And come. The one that you love is sick. And the Bible says the Lord Jesus did what? Like he did not hear it. He acted like an immigrant in America. He overstayed his visa. <laughs> Hallelujah. For the Bible says that he stayed over there for four days. He overstayed the situation. And now here is he come. In French, we say, Doctor après la mort. Hallelujah. So here he's come. And Mary, I said, Mary, Mara runs to meet her master. Oh Lord. If you would have been here, ah, if 
you would have been in my situation. I wouldn't have been in this problem. If you would have heard me and answered me, I wouldn't have been in this difficulty. So she prayed, and now she ends up in doubt. How many times we do the same thing? Lord, help me. Lord, help me. And when the situation turns red, hey, what shall I do? What shall I do? But they are anointing, amen, can cause you to consult with the Spirit of God and see where it lays, where it goes, and how it's supposed to operate. So you can proclaim and announce a year of the grace. Are you following what I'm saying? When you're hearing that they're firing everybody because there is a inflation, and they send a letter, and they put a letter on your job, and they say, we have to get rid of uh, 200 workers. Meanwhile, in the place of your work, you are 199. <laughs> so if they got to get rid of 200, and then you are 199 employees, it means that you will be, you will be fired twice. <laughs> They fire you, they hire you, they fire you. to get the 200. So you look at this one, you know, ah, I'm gone. But you see, by the anointing, when you start consulting with the word of God, I don't know, you can find yourself miraculously Being fired from the place and hired in the other division of that place so that uh, you can supervise the new people because the company was sold. Are you know what I'm saying? They have to let go so that we choose. But because you do not perceive it and you do not see it, you will be so frantic that you will fire yourself before they fire you for the purpose. But the anointing can help you properly consult with the Lord so that you can pinpoint where and how you are to operate, what you are to say. So he kneeled down, stooped down, wrote on the ground. And now he got up, he says, the monk, uh, sorry, the one among you. He did not say she was wrong. He did not say they were right. He said, and let's do it this way. The one among you who never had problem. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let him start the first stone. The one among you who never. That, that's the key. The key is not once. Is never. Amen. If you never did anything wrong. You know, David will pray. He said all the time, oh Lord, let my enemy fall in a trap. Hey. But the David himself, he was enemy of somebody. Are you know what I'm saying? David himself misbehaved against somebody. You know what I'm saying? If that other person would have prayed against him, what would that be? Amen. Because he killed the husband of Bathsheba. So he misbehaved against Bathsheba. Hallelujah. So now imagine 
Bathsheba, just like uh, the widow who went to Elisha to say, ah, the guy, uh, the king tried to get my, my two sons to become slaves. So she goes to the king, to God, you know, for justice. Not only he violated me, but he killed my husband. I don't think she went around praising it. Amen. So she could have gone to the Lord. Oh, Lord, I pray, strike him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Did God would have stricken, stricken uh, 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 and David? Absolutely. So in another word, the Lord Jesus says, if you never cause problem to anyone, amen? If you never did anything wrong to no one, then apply the law. That's all. If you never did anything wrong, apply the law. But if you did anything wrong, apply grace and truth. But that wisdom of understanding how to apply and where to apply grace and truth comes by the anointing. And you don't have anointing until you go to the mountain. He was still fresh. He was smelling anointing. Amen? Because the Bible said that it was early in the morning after he has come down. So you were still smelling anointing. Amen. Like, like you know, in the morning when uh, you are getting, getting ready to go to work and you put your perfume. Amen. You are still smelling fresh. By the time it's 1 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. He, here, here you don't have uh, the same problem like in Africa. Here you can just take a uh, Uber. Uh, take a ride share in Africa. You have to run to catch the bus, and after you catch the bus, you have to squeeze like sardine. And when you squeeze like sardine, you have to be squeezed inside for a long time. So everybody around you smells something, but you have to be inside. And inside, you have so much heat. Have you ever read road in the bus in Africa that has a uh, AC? The bus over here, they do have AC. Yes. They, they do? Now. Oh, now that, that you are young. <laughs> you are young. <laughs> In our days, even Corolla buses, you will sweat inside. Okay. So the Lord was still fresh. How fresh are you in the anointing of the Lord? How much fresh are you refreshing yourself with the Spirit of God? How much? How much are you refreshing yourself in the Spirit of the Lord? Because at the end of the day, you cannot carry it until you have the anointing. If you don't, you will accumulate and accumulate frustration. And accumulation or accumulation of frustrations we help you be bitter. We help you be bitter. The day something arrives, something happens, you remember every bitterness that has happened in the same situation. And you remain incapable of overcoming. The memory that the enemy can utilize against you in order to cause you to lose, whether in your finances, 
whether in your activities, you will press, but you will keep inside a kind of doubt. Will I succeed? Are you what I'm saying? That's not from God. That is not from God. Somebody said one time, let the owl to God follow the path. Are you going to arrive there? You don't know because in reality, are you still alive? You don't know. <laughs> you, don't, you don't know. The grace, but how? How is the grace applied to you and not to the neighbor next door? How is the grace applied to you? But there is one reason why you are still alive. You are delivered for divine purpose. You are being set free for divine purpose. Until you finish your divine purpose, I say, God does not want you to expire. But if you are appointed to a divine purpose, why will you do a divine purpose with your strength? How, how you do that? How do you fulfill the will of God with your strength? You can't. You need the anointing. Say, Lord, anoint me. Lord, anoint me to fulfill your divine purpose on time. You are not a random julugad, something randomly thrown into the earth. No. But you cannot operate without the fuel and the kerosene of the one who sent you in first place. You cannot fly that high until you have learned to wait upon the Lord. Go back to the word, please. Verse John chapter 8 verse 9 and they w and they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one beginning at the eldest even unto the last and Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst are you what I'm saying the lady committed adultery I'm certain that among the Pharisee some of them, the worst that they would have done was just to lie. You know what I'm saying? Let me read again. They say we caught her in the midst of the very act. Amen? So whether the window were open, whether the door were open, she was caught. And I'm certain among them, from the whole to the little, there are some people the worst thing that they ever did in the, done in their life is that they, they stole the, 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 the meat in the, in, the, in the pot. Okay? No, yeah. Meaning, looking at what they did is far less compared to what she did. But notice something. When the word of God is true in your life, you cannot dispute it. The word of God said that being convinced by being convicted by their own conscience. So the Pharisees, the elders, the scribes, the children, the youth, they're like, hmm. yesterday. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, when I was younger, my mom would cook, and she lives there. Then, around like five or six in the morning, I always go out. I look into the pot, and I look for the chicken or the meat. And I eat some, 
and I go. You know, in Africa, in those days, you don't do like that. In here, you are permitted to eat what you find. Because there is so much. <laughs> there is abundance. Over there, it is counted for the week and the days. So if you found three chicken inside and you have four children, it means it is to be divided. You just can't eat one. Are you what I'm saying? So I went and I ate some. And at the time of her serving, at midi, uh, what is that? At noon, my mom says, who ate the chicken out of the, this one? <laughs> because if you say it's you, you won't have chicken. <laughs> so to not lie, you have to go p to the bathroom to pee. <laughs> so she won't see you to ask you. <laughs> Amen. So I'm certain there's people, some of them were like, yesterday I ate the meat out of the, the pot. This morning, I lied. The other day, I got angry for nothing. The other time, I was bitter. Two days ago, I did not forgive. The Bible said that each one of them being accused, not by Christ, hallelujah, but by their own conscience. What did they do? Give me the word. Verse 9. Verse 9. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one. Went out one by one. one. By one. <laughs> oh, you see the line? It's like I, they did not go all together. Uh, 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 uh. One was like. The other one was like. <laughs> the Bible said they went out. One by one. I don't know how many that were there, but however many that were there, they do not go by groups. They go one by one. What it means, God addresses each case singularly. He speaks to people singularly. Even if you come to a group, he speaks to you singularly. Today we are here. The word of God is being preached. Even though he's preaching to the church, he's speaking to you singularly. But the word of God is what convicts people so that they may change their ways in order to receive the grace and the truth in which they are to thrive. How much of the anointing do you need? Depends on how much you go on the mountain. Pray. Pray. Verse 10. Verse 10. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the, the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Where are those thine accusers? Had no man condemned thee? Verse 11. She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Hallelujah. Now that's where things now get more clearer. He says, Listen, you were born for purpose. But you crumble your life under the heaviness, under the frustrations, under the things, the last of this world. But as you were about to enter your destiny, this come the law of Moses to cut you short. 
But I, Christ, your Savior, your Deliverer, comes not to just uh, change or rev uh, revive you, but to change and transform you. Again, I, Christ, your Deliverer, your Savior, I ain't coming just to revive you, but to change and transform you. But before I transform and change you, I need to ask you a question. Do you know that what you did is wrong? Yes, Lord. Do you know that the law of God, of Moses, was right to cut you off? Yes, Lord. Do you know that all of those who accuse you give you grace? Because they're out to apply the grace. It's like a jury in the courtroom. They were the jury. Hallelujah. Guilty, not guilty. Even if they don't like the person and the person is not guilty, they say not guilty. Amen? If they like the person and the person is guilty, what would they do? Guilty. The facts of the matter have risen against you. But the word of God has prevailed against it. So they didn't accuse you. They let you, I mean, they left. Nor I, your Savior, nor I, your Lord, would condemn you. But go and fulfill the purpose of God. So now you are set aside, you are set apart, not so that uh, you say to everybody, I'm free, but so that uh, you fulfill the purpose of God. The men of Gandhara, the madmen of Gandhara, possessed by all kind of demons. How many? Legions. Oh, wow. You know, if you lie, you steal. It's already a problem. But if you have legion, <laughs> I don't know. Every thought of his mind could not go right. And he was obligated to sleep in the tombs. And I say even those people who do, uh, who work at the, at the cemetery and the funeral homes, they don't sleep at the, at, the, at the tombs. He was gone. And yet Christ brought back his purpose. I even what I'm saying. So what is your case that is so complicated that God cannot turn around? Say, Lord, anoint me. Lord, anoint me! You may see in your family line, you may see in your own life or in the city, you may see in the circumstances around you that things are too complicated or things are usual. But the word of God says is able to grant you grace and truth so that you be separated to fulfill your divine purpose. You are called to go to the mountain, to be anointed, set apart, so to fulfill your divine purpose. As long as you know that you are fulfilling and staying in the will of God, the word of God reminds us, look at the things that comes on you as an opportunity to be a conqueror. So you will fulfill the divine purpose. There are many voices in the world. 
from the radio to the TV. Amen? All kind of voices. But the voice of your Lord is you have to recognize it and follow. So you fulfill your divine purpose. But you have to go to the mountain. You have to go to the mountain. To be anointed. Such anointing that breaks the yoke. So you can break the yoke of others also. Hmm. Your divine purpose, if you don't know, is to be a light to the world. Hallelujah. If you don't know your divine purpose, is to be a light to the world. So she was delivered and told, go. And don't fall in the same trap again. So what it means is that the trap in which she fell, she had the will to not fall again. Hallelujah. Before that, she could not have the will not to fall into. She was bound to fall in. Hallelujah. But when she's delivered from the power of that trap, she has now the will to say no. And with the will to say no, you have the power to say yes to God. And with the power to say yes to God, you have the ability to fulfill the divine purpose that is appointed on your life. You cannot miss it. And you cannot delay it. I pray that you see properly what God called you for. So you be not entangled in so many things that you lose the purpose for which you were set apart. However, he became Second in coming, Joseph, the purpose was to bring and to keep alive, amen, the lineage of Israel. However, he rose in command, he had a divine purpose that was announced before he was born. Through Abraham, by to Abraham. So Joseph understood that however I am treated, I have a divine purpose and a goal to reach. But I must keep the line straight. I must keep my path straight. So that however it comes, I must arrive. However it goes, I must a Drive. I cannot be aborted into my path. Are you what I'm saying? And wherever it goes, I must arrive. Set free and separated from among them to fulfill your divine purpose. The Spirit of the Lord is 
upon me. And has anointed me. Can you put that on the screen for me please? Hallelujah. That's your divine purpose. The spirit of the Lord is upon you. And anointed you. That is your divine purpose. Do you have it on the screen? Put on the word, please. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I think in the book of Luke, chapter 4, either on Isaiah or Luke, either of the two. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Hallelujah. Can you read for us, please? The Spirit of the Lord, on the screen, on the screen. The Spirit Look, of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me mm -hmm. because he had anointed me to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is the first thing upon you, anoints you. The Spirit of the Lord upon you, anoints you. By prayer. Hallelujah. You are not anointed by wish. You are not anointed by desire. Hallelujah. You may desire the gifts, but you don't desire the anointing. You need to pray to receive. Hallelujah. Continue. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me mm -hmm. because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Mm -hmm. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted. So that's your purpose. If you don't know your purpose, that's your purpose right here. You've been set free. You've been delivered. You've been set apart for that purpose. If there is nothing else that you ever understood, that's your purpose. You are being called, anointed, to preach the gospel to the poor. Hallelujah. You have been anointed to heal the broken hearted. Can you give me that this one on a amplify version, please? Go ahead. Luke chapter 4, verse 18, amplify. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, the mm -hmm. Messiah, because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. Mm -hmm. He has sent me to announce, release, pardon, forgiveness. Now, you want to understand, even though they put in bracket the Messiah, it does not mean it's only on Jesus Christ. Amen. Because the apostle that he has sent, they did that work. Hallelujah. And he said in the book of John chapter 17, that the... Uh, Amen. The work, uh, no, no, it, it says, I pray for those who will believe in me through the words of the disciples. Hallelujah. So even though it is in bracket, the Messiah, it does not only apply to Christ. Because some people, they are fast and quick to say that. That we say, well, you know, this is not about me. This is about Jesus Christ. No, it's about you because he made the, he was the firstborn among the brothers. Hallelujah. To give us the example. So let's continue. So the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Uh -huh. Because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. Mm -hmm. He has sent me to announce release, mm -hmm. pardon, forgiveness to, to the, the captives. captives. This is what the Lord Jesus says. He says, I give you the keys of heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Whatever you bind in earth will be bound in heaven. You have power to forgive sins. Hallelujah. Continue. And 
recovery of mm -hmm. sight to the blind. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, blind is everywhere. You have blind on every side. Blind emotionally, blind intellectually, blind spiritually, blind physically, blind. He said to the blind. Amen. To the blind. If somebody has a blink blind of knowledge, God wants to use you to instigate that knowledge. Hallelujah. So you have been anointed as a child of the king to bring the will of the king. Continue, please. To set free those who are oppressed. Hallelujah. Amen. To set free those who are oppressed. Amen. Amen. Down throw them bruised, crushed by tragedy. Tra 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 tragedy. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Now, in oppress, you have diverse type of oppression. Hallelujah. You have demonic oppression. It says in the same book of Luke, chapter 9, chapter 10, chapter 9, it says, I give you power and authority to cast out. Amen. So if you have power and authority to drive them out, hallelujah, so you fulfill the will of God. Give me back the word, please. Verse 19. No, no, go back to verse 18 again. Verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, the Messiah, because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to announce, release, pardon, forgiveness to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, downtrodden, bruised, crushed by tragedy, to proclaim the fav favorable year of the Lord, the day when salvation and the favor of God abound greatly. Hallelujah. Amen. And then, what happened in verse 20? Verse 20, then he rolled up the scroll, having stopped in the middle of the verse, gave it back to the, to the attendants and sat down to teach. And the eyes of all those in the synagogue were attentively fixed on him. He began speaking to them. To okay, hold on a second. He rolled up. The scroll, the scroll, put it aside. Then he starts saying, Today, <laughs> hallelujah, I love the word. He starts saying, Today, if you don't hear anything, hear it now. He starts saying, Today, you know why the Bible does not give necessarily days with a date? Like kind of saying, it starts saying in the year two at the nine, but he just said today instead of giving the date, specific date, like that part of the Bible, because today is intended to be when? Amen. He does not want you to see this as a word that he has spoken then. Ah, Jesus. Say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. He says, after that you have heard what your purpose is, after that you have heard that you are no longer convicted by the law. Guilty. That you are released from the guilt of the law. Hallelujah. No, you are convicted by the law, but you are released from the sentence. Amen. After that you have heard. That I forgave you. Rest you. 
separated you, put you apart. After that, you have woken in the morning. You brush your teeth, which I expect you did. You took your shower. You took your two feet. And then you went in the place of prayer. Hallelujah. For my house shall be called a house of amen. And when you have arrived there, it says after he read from the word, from the scroll of Isaiah, he closed it. Then he says, now, today, He began speaking to them. Who is them? Is us. <laughs> Hallelujah. He is he's using my map, but I'm among us. Amen. <laughs> I will not give you anointing without me. I want anointing. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. He began speaking to us. And he says, today, not the scripture, this scripture, hallelujah, has been fulfilled in your hearing and in your, mm, Lord Jesus. Many of the brethren are not here today. That we wait for the round. <laughs> but for those of you who are here today, <laughs> Lord Jesus, I help that I pray that you help us. For those of you who are here today, he says, today, this scripture. Hallelujah. Is not will be fulfilled. Hallelujah. Has been fulfilled in your hearing. If you can hear my voice, lift your hand. Hallelujah. In your hearing. If you can hear it, it means it has been fulfilled. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you were hearing it, if you have heard it, if you're hearing it, uh, sorry, for those of you who are internet, I don't know, but he said in your presence. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing and in your presence. I am anointed for a difficult situation. I am anointed for a complicated matter. I am anointed for difficult situations. I am anointed for complicated matter. I am anointed for destiny. I am anointed for future. I am anointed to overcome. I am anointed to possess. I am anointed to overthrow. I am anointed to build. I am anointed in the name of Jesus Christ. For today, Lord God, you said this scripture has been fulfilled in my hearing. 
in my presence. I pray for yourself. Oh God, you said today this scripture has been fulfilled in my hearing, in my presence. This scripture has been fulfilled in my hearing, in my presence. I can proclaim a year of grace of the Lord. I can proclaim a year of grace of the Lord. I decree grace. I decree favor. I decree grace. I decree favor. Today, the word of God is being fulfilled, has been fulfilled in my hearing. Today, today, I'm taking my portion. Today, I'm taking my portion. I'm taking my territory. For your word, your scripture is being fulfilled, has been fulfilled in my hearing, in my presence. That is thy will. That is thy will. I am advancing. I am heading forward. I am no longer bound. I am no longer restricted. I am continuing. Hey, Jesus Christ. I possess it. I lose it. I decree it. And it is established by your word in the name of Jesus Christ. I am fulfilled the God. I am anointed the Lord. Lake it to break yoga. To break yoga. To break yoga. To scatter curses. I am anointed to scatter curses. To return and reverse every decree that has been pronounced against my family, against my life, against my children, against my household, against my marriage, against my ministry, against my finances, against my businesses. I decree by the word of the Lord, I reverse every word contrary, every judgment that the enemy has pronounced for I am anointed today in my hearing in my presence Father I bless your name to give a sight to the blind to give a sight to the blind, spiritual blindness, emotional blindness, understanding blindness, to give sight to the blind, to give sight to the blind, to be, Lord God, a pillar of understanding and light to the world. Oh, Father, let your goodwill that has been put and poured out on me, oh, manifest, oh, God, for it is thy good will. It is thy good will. Shetiripra. The limitations that you have has placed upon my life have been broken. I destroy the words of the wizards, of the wishes, whatever has been spoken against the plans of God in my family. I scatter it by the name of Jesus Christ, by the name of Jesus Christ. Gadabadi gadabada. I bless your holy name for today in my hearing, in my presence. This scripture has been fulfilled. Lekovro Sogadi.
Ah, Lord Jesus. Los corondo, bro. Le ma foros qui bidi bena made. Ma poros se vrende los qui didi. Oh, Father God, I bless your holy name, God, for revealing the things that you have hidden. For revealing the things that you have kept. For revealing the things that you have appointed for this time. Lord God, I honor you. I honor you. I honor you. I honor you. So for God, I get it, get it, get it. Le prese gavandoro vozo gadia, shonte de fregedia. I am anointed for difficult matters. I am anointed for difficult matters. Le kate kandoro bobro seketa. Le serere de yane madagada. I am anointed to spread thy wisdom, to flow in thy wisdom, to flow in thy understanding. I am anointed, God. I am anointed, O God. I am anointed, O God. For divine ideas, for divine breakthrough, for divine understanding, I am anointed. I am anointed. I am anointed. I am anointed. Guru bere inebe ya bagada. Kabare fo burukuda. Mo makoro so gode. Lama te pe pe fetele oskudura. Line press get Oh Lord Jesus, I am a remedy for so many things. Ah Makevro Sigida. For by your good will, Lord God. You made it, Lord God, possible. Ma sofere ketele rondoro gida. Oh my Lord God. Yes, I am anointed to heal the brokenhearted. Yes, Lord God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Listen. What God has said, that is established. Say to yourself, what God has said, that it is established. Oh, my God. You must understand. There are rewards that God gives. For he says, those who come unto him, must first know that he is. And that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. What you have not received yesterday, what you have not received two years ago, what you have not received ten years ago, he said, as you are seeking me diligently, I will be your Re-water. The lame at the beautiful gate. He been going for the same thing for years until the grace of God one day, that day, has made everything perfect. And he was able to have a single strength hand and get up and walk again and praise God in the midst. There is a day. And the Lord has called that day today. And today, he has fulfilled his word. This scripture. 
in our hearing, in our presence.